Yo yo, welcome to lesson 12. This will be the last tutorial of the year and I'll see you guys in 2022. Today, we will be combining lists and loops together. I hope that you had a chance to review both of these concepts before. If you didn't, please do pause this video and review before continuing. The worst thing that you can do to yourself as a beginner is moving forward without understanding the previous concepts. Cool, so in the previous lesson, we talked about loops and we created a variable called index to keep track of the current iteration for the loop. In lesson 10, when we talked about lists, we labeled the position of each item and called that the index. So based on this picture, we can see the correlation between a list and a loop. As you can see, we always start a range at zero. And similarly for a list, the first item is at index zero. And I also told you guys that n is basically the total number of items inside a list. And in this example, n equals five. And to get the last item in the list, it's n minus one, which equals four. And if we draw this range out, we would get zero, one, two, three, and four. And we don't include five because it is non-inclusive. And if you look closely, this range and the indexes of the list all match up together. So basically what I'm trying to say is we can use a loop to print out each item inside a list. Cool, let's do a quick example together. Here we have a variable called numbers and it's basically a list of numbers, five, three, seven, eight, and one. So let's print out each number inside the list. To print out the first one, we just type print and then we pass the name of the variable, which is numbers. And then we open square brackets and pass it zero to get the first item. And if we click run, we're gonna see five here. So now to print three, all we have to do is copy this line, copy, paste, and change this to a one. And to get seven, we just copy and paste again and put two. And then for eight, we copy paste and then three. And finally, for the last item, it's four. And now if we click run, we're gonna see five, three, seven, eight, one. Perfect. And now let's add another number to the list. Let's add 10 and let's click run. And here we don't see 10 in the output. So basically to get 10, we just have to add another print and put five here. And now if we click run, we're gonna see 10. As you notice, every time we add a new number to our list, we always have to add another print statement. This is very tedious, and generally, this can lead to human error. Uh, for example, you might mess up one of the indexes and then you might get an error in your code. So if we want to simplify this, we can just use a loop. So to do this, all we have to do is for i in range zero, and then we can use the len function, len, and we pass it the list numbers, and then we end the statement with a colon. And then on the next line, let's type print and let's pass it the index for now. Uh, let's click run and see what happens. Uh, so now, as you can see, we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if you look up here on line 2 to 7, we see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So basically what we can do instead is we can type numbers and put a square bracket and then put i inside here. And now let's click run. And now we get 5, 3, 7, 8, 1, 10, which are basically these elements up here. And now let's add some more numbers. Uh, let's do 12, 20, 30... One. And let's click run. And look at that, we didn't have to add any more print statements and now we're able to print out each item inside the list. So this is why we use loops. It makes doing repetitive tasks very easy. And also for the end of the range, we use the value len numbers. Uh, we do this because we can remove items or add more items to our list. And this len numbers will always give us the total number of items. For example, if we put five in here and we click run, uh, we're always going to get five items no matter how many items there are in the list. So that's why we should use len numbers instead. So that way we can get all of the items inside the list. Cool. So now back to the drawing board. For anyone that's lost or confused, let's run through the code together. So this is our loop. And instead of using a five, we should put len numbers here. So that way we will always get the total number of items. So if you remember from the previous lessons, I mentioned drawing your list out on a piece of paper and using a finger or a pencil to guide you along. So I have this arrow and I'll guide you through this loop. So first, this index starts at zero. And then our code does print numbers index, which is zero. And that's why we get five. And then we move forward by one. So now our index is one and we print numbers one. And then we go to two and then we print numbers two. And then we go to three, print numbers three. And finally, we go to four, print numbers four. And then the arrow will move forward and now we're outside our range, so the loop will end. So the key takeaway here is that this index changes for each iteration. 
Cool, so there's also a shortcut to writing a loop. For this loop, we cared about the indexes, but if we don't, we could write a loop that gives us each item inside the list. So in this example, since we're dealing with numbers, we can name the variable end. So we can do for end in numbers, which is the name of the list, we can do print n. So let's comment out the code above, and now let's click run. And as you can see, this n represents each item inside the list. So now we don't even have to write a range and we don't even care about the indexes. So this loop is useful if all we care about are the items inside the list and we don't care about the index or even the range. Nice, now that we understand lists and loops, let's use these concepts together to build a simple calculator. So what we want to do is basically write a function to add two numbers. Feel free to pause this video and try it on your own. Cool, so to write this function, all we have to do is type def and give it a name. So I'll just call it add numbers. And here we'll take in two parameters, num1 and num2, and then we end it with a colon. Then on the next line, what we want to do is return num1 plus num2. So now let's test our function and make sure that it works. Uh, so let's call our function add numbers, and we open the parentheses and pass it two values. So let's pass eight and 10. And now let's click run. Uh, okay, let's comment out this line above. Now let's click run again. Nothing shows up in our console. So to get something to show up, all we have to do is add a print in the front and open the parentheses and close it. And now let's click run again. Uh, so now we see 18, which looks right to me. A plus 10 is 18. Cool. So now what if we want to add three numbers? How would we do that? Well, all we have to do is add another parameter. Let's add num3. And now let's also add num3. And now let's click run. And here we get an error saying missing one required positional argument num3. So all we have to do is add another number here. So let's add two. And now let's click run. And here we'll see 20. And what if we want to add four numbers? We'll have to add another parameter. And then we have to do plus num4. And then we have to add another value here. And now we can click run. And now we can add four numbers. But now what if I want to add two numbers again? Let's remove the two and the five. And now let's click run. And now we get an error saying missing two required positional arguments, num3 and num4. So basically the problem here is that our code is not scalable. What I mean by this is that every time we want to add more numbers, we have to update our function. And if we want to add less numbers, we'll have to update our function as well. So basically the problem here is that our function is not generic enough. So instead of adding more parameters, what we can do is we can use a list, where basically the list can be empty or it can have more than one items. So let's replace these parameters and let's call the list numbers. And now we'll have to update the code here. So let's get rid of line 16. Before we start writing the logic for this code, let's run through a real life example. So that way you can understand what we will be doing next. Cool, let's imagine that we're in a grocery store and we want to buy these four fruits that's stored in a list. So the apple is in position zero, banana one, strawberry two, and pineapple three. And at the bottom, you can see the prices of each item. So right now we're at the checkout and our current total balance is zero. So first the cashier will scan the apple, and in this case it's $3. So now our total will get updated to three. The next item is a banana. So now we have to add two to our total, which is five. And next we have a strawberry, which is $5. So now we have to update our total to 10. And finally, the last item is a pineapple, which is $1. So one plus 10 is 11. And basically the total that will be charged is $11. Hopefully this example made sense. Basically the total always starts at zero and the total will be updated based on the price of each item. Cool, now back to coding. The first thing we want to do is add a variable inside the function to keep track of the current total. So let's call this total and set it to zero because at first the total is zero. Next, what we want to do is basically write a loop to go through each number. So let's do for n in numbers. And then inside the loop, all we want to do is add the number to the total. So we can just do total plus equal n. And now at the end of the function, all we want to do is just return the total. Cool, so now let's test our function. Let's update the parameters here. Instead of passing eight and 10, we should put it inside a list. So let's add a square bracket to the front and a closing square bracket to the end. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we got 18. And now let's remove all of the numbers inside the list. So if we pass it an empty list, we should get a zero because our total starts at zero. And now let's put some more numbers. Three, seven, eight, two. And now let's click run. And now, as you can see, we got 20. So if this doesn't make sense, just add some print statements to your code. For example, you can just put print n and total. And now let's click run. 
And as you can see at the beginning, we got three, which is this three here, and our total is at three. Next, we see a seven, so our total is 10. Next, we see an eight, so our total is 18. Finally, we see a two, and then our total is 20. And at the end, we return this total back. And that's why we can print 20. Cool, hopefully everything we talked about today made sense. If you want to practice this concept, here's a simple problem. Basically, write a function that takes a list of fruits, represented as a string. And basically what you want to do is calculate the total, like this example, and the prices for each fruit is represented here. And yeah, try that out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a happy new year and make sure to hit the like and the subscribe for more content.